Hello again. This is the third and final um, hydration reaction that we're going to talk about, uh, which is considered a hydroboration oxidation reaction. This again is a two-step reaction uh, in which ultimately we're adding a water molecule across an alkene. But what's uh, unique about this is that it has two considerations compared to the others. First, this is an anti or non-Markovnikov uh, reaction. And what that means is, of course, then we attach the OH at the opposite position from where we would have uh, with the other two mechanisms we've studied so far. The other thing that will come into play in just a moment is that it is a syn addition, meaning that both the hydrogen and the OH that we'll be adding come from the same side of the molecule. Uh, and that'll become apparent in just a moment. First, we need to talk about what reagents we're dealing with here. Um, the bor part in hydroboration indicates a boron. Uh, quite typically, the two forms that you'll see for this are either borane in a solvent like THF, or its close relative diborane. Um, both of those are equivalent um, use uh, the same reaction. Typically, the oxidation step that we'll be using will be accomplished by hydrogen peroxide. And so when we uh, write the reagents for this, you'll see it's relatively complicated. We'll see step one would be something like our borane in THF. And then step two, and this is a sequential two-step process, would be hydrogen peroxide uh, typically in a basic environment like a sodium hydroxide solution. And so what are we doing here? Well, again, the full mechanism is described in your textbook, but for the purposes of recognizing this and predicting products, what we'll say is we generate water being added across the double bond, but in contrast to the other mechanisms we've seen, in this case, we get the H added to the more internal carbon and the OH added to the more external. And so this is the anti-Markovnikov addition product. We can't necessarily tell that this is a syn addition. Whenever we talk about stereochemistry, uh, syn and cis and trans and anti and all of those words, we need to have some point of rigidity so that we can see what's happening. And so if we examine, for instance, uh, the case of a, a ring shaped, a cycloalkene, We'll uh, add a substitution on one of the carbons just so we can tell what's happening. When we talk about our two-step process, hydroboration and oxidation, what would we predict to happen? Well, Markovnikov addition would put the OH on the more substituted carbon we get an alcohol group there. However, this is not Markovnikov addition. In this mechanism, we're getting anti-Markovnikov or non-Markovnikov addition. So what we will get is a case where I've got the OH uh, added to the other carbon and hydrogen added to the carbon that's more substituted. Now, syn means that the two components are added from the same side of the molecule. And so how do I show that? Well, on a ring structure, I can use wedge and dash notation. So if I go in and I erase the little bonds that I made here in the first place, I can show the wedge and dash notation. So perhaps my hydrogen and my hydroxide come from the front. And that means then that my methyl group here was pushed to the back. Like that. But I could just as easily have had my hydrogen and hydroxide come in from the back as this product was being formed, which would push the methyl group to the front. So these two molecules are formed, and if we look at what they are and their relationship to one another, 
we would say that we've formed two enantiomers, or a pair of enantiomers. So we have to consider that both options are possible. Stereochemistry, uh, such as it is, in this case we have two stereocenters that we've generated, we've formed this pair of enantiomers. What we would not form would be the two that would show an anti-addition. And that is where the hydrogen and the hydroxide are on opposite sides of the ring. These are not formed.